Welcome to Maine Public News Connect, original news stories from Maine Public Radio, airing weekly in Spanish, French, Portuguese, Somali, and English. I'm your host, Ari Snyder. Today is Friday, June 30th, and here are the week's top stories. Medical interpreters at Maine Health last week voted unanimously to form a union, joining the Maine Service Employees Association. The interpreters announced their union drive in April, saying they were coming together for, quote, respect, equality, a fair wage, and a real voice. Constant Kabuyenge interprets Swahili, French, Kurundi, and Kinyarwanda at Maine Medical Center in Portland and was one of the 29 yes votes. He says he supports the union as a way for interpreters to have a greater say in decisions relating to wages, working conditions, and other matters. Maine Health is the largest healthcare network in the state, the vote comes two years after nurses at Maine Medical Center voted to form their own union. Portland Public Schools is pushing to expand multilingual learning in response to a growing number of students who are not native English speakers. Last week, the school board passed a resolution calling for all teachers in the district to attain some level of multilingual learning certification over the next several years. The district has enrolled more than 950 new students since the start of the school year, including those with, quote, intensive language needs, District-wide, 32% of students are multilingual learners, according to the school board. The resolution does not set a specific timeline for training all teachers in the district, but calls for achieving, quote, substantial progress within four years. Maine officials are describing a $272 million federal grant to expand broadband internet access as historic and say it will reshape access across the state. State officials say about 30,000 locations across the state still have no internet connection, and many are in the most rural areas. They say the grant will drastically expand the use of new technologies to ensure that all those locations have quality service. The new funding comes from an infrastructure law passed by Congress two years ago. The state is still accepting comments through the end of June on its plan for how to spend the funds. Forecasters say Maine has recorded nearly five inches of rain this month so far, making this June one of the wettest on record. Meteorologist John Palmer says despite the very dry conditions the state experienced during the last few years, current conditions make another drought unlikely anytime soon. But Palmer says that more wet weather expected through the weekend could cause flash flooding. Freiburg and other communities near the White Mountains are at the highest risk. This has been Maine Public News Connect. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thank you to our excellent community partners for supporting and contributing to this program. We are happy to collaborate on this project with the monthly multimedia publication Amjambo Africa, our official media partner. Maine Public News Connect has been made possible by individual supporters and foundations from across Maine, as well as Ku and Patricia Ewan, Seaport Credit Union, Hannaford Supermarkets, Maine Housing, and IDEX. Maine Public News Connect is made possible by Ku and Patricia Ewan, committed to bridging cultural differences in our communities. Juntos. Ensemble. What a year. Junto. Seaport Credit Union. Together. Hannaford Supermarkets, celebrating the diversity of its employees, customers, and communities, and committed to fostering a welcoming environment. Together, they're greater than groceries. Learn more at Hannaford.com. Has paying your mortgage been a struggle since COVID-19? The Maine Homeowner Assistance Fund could help. You may be eligible for up to $50,000 in aid. Apply today at MaineHomeownerHelp.org.